We're going to go to the next nerve, and all I got to do here on the machine is press on the next side. When I do this, and now the ulnar sensory left, and the screen is blank again, that means I can start from scratch to do the ulnar. And what I'm going to do, ulnar, as I said, is over the baby finger. So I break, take this electrode off like so. These are nicely, they stick nicely so that you can do a whole study with one set of electrodes. So I'm going to put this over the ulnar here. Okay, that's for the active. Take this one off and put it over the reference, like right here. Okay, and I'm going to leave the ground exactly where it is. Now, I'm put a little bit more cream. Don't put too much cream because sometimes you, what you do is you make a cream bridge. That means there's cream between this electrode and this electrode, and you're going to short circuit. Nothing's going to happen to the patient, but you're going to short circuit the signal. And you're not going to get a good response. So be, be very careful how much cream, not too, not too much and not too little, obviously. I stimulate the ulnar nerve over this area of the wrist right here. Okay, and now I got to go back again here. If I press it at two, at a stimulus of two milliamps, okay, I'm I'm certain that I'm not going to get a response. So that's why I go up. I'm going up to eight, and eight. I be, I'm beginning to see a response. Look at that beautiful response at twelve. Now I'm going to see if I can get it higher. Remember, I need to get it as high as I can so that I know that I stimulated all the nerves inside that inside that nerve, all the fibers inside that nerve. And here, and actually that's not growing anymore, so that I know that that's the maximal response that I'm going to get. Now I'm going to store it. And again, you see a nerve action potential. It put the, the machine automatically placed the cursor. Now sometimes the machine does not place the cursors in the right place. Sometimes the machine might, you know, might place the cursor here. Bring it down so that you can see it. Sometimes the machine might place the cursor here. 
and I know that that's not the right thing. It's using some formulas to put the cursor where it thinks it is. So I can override it and put it right where I want it. Uh, again, what I want to show you, for instance, I don't like this cursor here. I'm going to bring this cursor a little bit down here. And I want to show you here, this is the sensory potential. Not this, not this, not that. Why are you getting this red back and forth here? Because as you're stimulating, the finger is moving. When the finger is moving, the electrodes are moving, so you get a stimulus uh, shock movement artifact, basically. And we ignore that. And what I want to tell you is usually the sensory action potential is usually in the second and sometimes in the third column, but not further than that. So now we know that the onset latency, that means the distal latency, that means the latency when the nerve started to react to the stimulation. The latency is, is right here, number one. The one that's put at the peak, obviously, it's called peak latency. Now, why do we measure two latencies, onset and peak? Because sometimes the nerve gives you a lot of artifact, and sometimes you can't really tell exactly where the onset latency is or the distal. I'm using onset and distal interchangeably. Onset and distal is the same, where the distal latency is. But everybody can identify where the peak is, so sometimes that's why sometimes they use the peak latency. And now they use the... Uh, the return to baseline, that's number three. And I press next, and now I have ulnar motor left, so now I'm in the right place. I'm going to take these off here. Again, I'm still using the same electrodes. They have enough glue on them. I put it right where I marked up the spot. Okay. And I take this here off, and I put it on the baby finger. And I'm going to stimulate the ulnar nerve at the wrist. Here we go. And here's the stimulation point. So I do it like so. Now, first thing, we see a response coming up here. I go up higher because I want to make as big a response as possible. And the ulnar usually has a response like this that has two bellies. That's normal for the ulnar nerve. It's not abnormal. So that's the wrist response, and I saved it. And now the computer identified it, and it tells me that this is the beginning, this is the peak, and this is the return to baseline. And in the ulnar nerve, because as you know, if you had, you've had your crazy bone, uh, most ulnar nerve problems come at the elbow. So I need to stimulate at the elbow. In the ulnar nerve, I stimulate at two places at the elbow. The first thing is below the elbow, and the second thing is above the elbow. Now, why is that? If you have a problem here at the elbow, right, uh, the conduction from here to here is going to be okay, unless the nerve is very damaged. That's another story. But if the nerve is not completely severed or not completely damaged, if I stimulate from here to here, it's going to be okay. It's when I stimulate from here to here that the nerve is going to go through the elbow and be slowed. So that allows me to localize the nerve lesion at the elbow, essentially. So now let's stimulate below the elbow, which is right here. Okay, and I'm going to see if I can show you this without my hand being in the way. Right here. And so below the elbow, the nerve is deep, so sometimes you have to use more electricity. Let's see, and your arm is going to jump because we're going up higher now. And now with more electricity. Here we go. And we got it. So that's the response below the elbow. I accept it. You see, it's very similar to the one at the wrist. Okay. And now we go above the elbow, which is right here. And we stimulate it again. And usually above the elbow, the nerve is closer to the skin, so I decrease the stimulation a little bit. But you're going to see it again. Here we go, and I got a nice one. And that's the stimulation of the ulnar nerve at the wrist, below and above the elbow. So, the next thing for the ulnar nerve, we're going to do the F wave. Again, when I stimulate the nerve here, the electricity is going up and down. And the way we display it on the screen, it's going to show me where the F wave is coming from and where the distal stimulation is coming from. So now I'm going to press next, and that's going to show me the ulnar F wave. Again, here I'll be looking at the response coming from the wrist. Here I'll be coming, looking at the response coming from the neck. And for the F wave, like I said before, we always stimulate at the wrist. Okay, I'm going to try to get my hand out of the way here. Here we go. 
So I'm going to use some electricity, and again, I want you to squeeze the ball. Uh, you can ask them how much money they own. They they owe on their credit card. That always does it as well. Just distract them. So here we go. And I don't have it. I'm not using enough stimulation. Now I'm using enough stimulation. Look, I'm beginning to see the F wave. I'm going to give it a bit more to see if now I'm still growing here a bit more. Okay, so uh, the response is not growing anymore. So now I'm going to accumulate the F waves to superimpose them. Here we go. Squeeze. Look at these nice responses. You see those F waves that are coming up? Very, very nice. And I would give her about 10. It's counting 8, 9, 10. And that's it. And now it superimposed them. It told me that the minimum latency is 25, which is normal for her age and her height.